And this is Trina's church. I'm showing you. There go your Wouldn't sister Janice. Oh, we, it's out there? We came with Deborah and Deborah Cole. Oh, all right. This is the church training I'm going to. Belongs oh, right to. Let's see. That's the rest of Columbia Park. Just take me, just hold the camera and, and take me in front of the church. Uh oh. You get in front of the church first. Oh. Oh no. There ain't no picture, baby. Walk back some. Alright. Take me. Because I ain't gonna keep it on too long. Just keep just keep it. No, nah, just don't don't do nothing. Don't just you ain't gotta do nothing. Just oh. look at it. You ain't gotta Oh Lord, I can't see. Like you're looking at. You see all of me? Uh huh. And 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 this tree in the church could be. You can hear too. I think she got. Me. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, that's all you gotta do. Oh Lord. All right, let me see how he told me. Right out of here. Do this here. This tree in the church. She ain't walk Uh-uh. I'm just showing you bits and pieces. Hmm? I'm going to try and let, let you hit Trina now. Trina, that's the boom. All right. That's where Trina going to be at, I think. Oh. I know you didn't know who that is. That's Trina. That's Christina I'm doing it. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, Chris. <laughs> we just thank you and we ask you for your presence for your anointing to fall fresh in this place. It is in Jesus' most gracious and divine name that we do pray. Amen and praise God. Hallelujah. Let's bless the Lord in the sanctuary. Because we know He's worthy of it. Hallelujah. We know He's worthy of the mercy and grace that He gives to us. Hallelujah. Now I know there's somebody forward to talk about what was prayer, things who prayed, and those who actually prayed. I believe that God was truly pleased. So we have intercessory prayer every Saturday morning here at 9 a.m. So if you need God to move on your behalf or you want to pray on behalf of someone else, please feel free to come. Amen. And you can make it even when it seems like that you can't. And uh, my testimony is this. Uh, me and that John McDonald. We have several kids, of course, that are struggling uh, being a little performing school. We had one young man who really just seemed like he was living his life the wrong way. Uh, he would come to school, he could smell marijuana on, barely would go to class. And uh, one day I put him aside and I told him, I said, son, you know, you, you've got your girlfriend pregnant. And man, if you continue on like this, you know, you're not going to make it. In fact, I told him this. I said, really, you're a mill boy. You. Lord, you're holy. Lord, you're holy. I give you. I give you the praise. All praise is the word. All praise is the word. I give you the praise. Lord, you're holy. Lord, you're holy. I give you. I give you the praise. 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 I give you the praise
I'm not standing up here all by myself. If the Holy Spirit is here with me, but I've been in the church. But there's a woman of God here. She did what the Lord said to do. She left the four walls of the church and she went out into the community. And she started doing the work of the community. And I'm walking like this because this is how I pray. This is how you should be praying and crying out the Lord for your children. So when I, when I minister, I walk. Because this is the Holy Spirit walking up and down the aisle. Each and every aisle, each and every seat, touching each and every person. He's walking through. But this woman of God, this woman of God, Santa Page, she did what the Lord said to do. She went into the highway. And she's been going into the byway doing the work of the Lord. Come on, come on. Lord is calling you forward. And what she's done is, she's done what the church hasn't done. She's gone into the community. And she's established the friends of Joe Brown. And you might say, well, Joe Brown is just a pope. I said she's established the friends of Joe Brown. And there's so many things connected to that that you can't even understand right now. So I'm going to let her explain to you what the friends of Joe Brown is because the Lord wants everybody to know what's going on. People think and they say that the mayor isn't doing anything and they say that that, that people just doing, you know, they are family. They are part of the family. And they're holy men and women of God. But the difference is this man of God was open to hear and to receive of the Lord. Now, I don't see Pastor Horton here, but I do see his wife here. And he wanted me to do this with you all together. Ashley, come on forward. about you. You are sent by God. That is the only explanation that I will give you. You don't have to question the fact that I have sent you to man because I choose the ones that I want to do my work. I anoint the heads of my followers. I send the chosen ones to the Lord. I pick who will follow me. You tell the preacher's trainer that it's time for me to send the one who will be faithful to the call. What significance does that have? What significance does that have? Well, woman of God, I didn't even realize it, but before I left Asia, my BCU teacher gave me. And it says, woman of faith. He prophesied to me by giving me this hat that I was going to be a woman of faith even before I was a woman of faith. And guess what? The women of God here at St. Bernard Baptist Mission, what are they called? The women of faith. And that's just how the Lord does stuff. I didn't even know, Sister Maxine, that I had this. And it says, step up and go green for Jesus. If you were here last Sunday, Sister Maxine got up to do the welcome. And what did she say? That's how we are. Coming to the church Sunday after Sunday, God has blessed us with gifts and calling. But instead of us using them for God, you know what we do? We run right back to the world. The things we were doing even before God saved us. And that's what they were doing in Corinth. Corinth was a young church, much like our church right now. Young people in the church. And when you look at them, the people that can rent, their lives didn't look like who they say they were. They say they were Christians, and guess what? They are. Because the Word of God says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So yes, they are saved, but they're looking like 
and they acted like the people of the world. So what do you do with that? All of these gifts and callings, all of this anointing that God has, what do you do with that? You know what you do? You ask for the power of the Holy Ghost. Because with salvation comes not only deliverance from the penalty of sin, but you get, get the power. God is, when, once you come forth and you confess your sins, and God is faithful, he's saying, and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness, like our sister prayed on today, he cleanses you. And what has to start happening is he, he sends a process in you at that point. You made your confession of faith, and I know you don't even look like God. You don't even look like God. You're still acting like the people of the world. And in fact, you're still hanging with them doing the things that they're doing. You have the same swagger that they have. You have the same bounce that they have. Guess what? God's going to use every part of your life. He's going to use that same swagger. Where's my brother? Here. Yeah. Show my swagger, guys. I love this swagger. When I see him going out there, I, I, I do that now too. Show him that swagger. Yeah. Come on, give him a little bit of a swagger. I'm going to start having fun until I got to the church. And like I told you, don't be hard on the man of God, because he is the man of God. He's a holy and righteous man of God, and God is going to deal with him accordingly. But you know what? God used this man of God. The type of person I am is that if you bless my life, God used you to bless my life, I don't forget it. Sometimes it might take me a long time to get around to it, but I don't forget it. You can sit down. And what it says in the book of Joel is, in the last days, I will pull out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And you know what that prophesy means? They're going to preach. But you didn't know that because you don't get in your life. You don't go to Bible study. You don't go to prayer. You don't even stay in your own prayer closet long enough for God to reveal his word unto you. It says they will preach. And it says your young men shall dream visions, see visions, and drink, and the old men shall dream dreams. My husband is a visionary in our family. I know many of you see me standing in front of you and they see me out doing this and that and the other. But when the new year begins to come upon us, I go to him and I ask him, I say, what is the vision for our family this year? And he begins to tell me what the vision of the, the, the year is that God has given him. So although you may see me standing here with a microphone in my hand, I follow this man of God's lead. Because I know he's a holy and righteous man of God. He's a man of honor and valor. And he goes before the Lord and the Lord speaks to and through him. And Pastor, I, I have, have been... Going over in my mind, wondering why. Because you see this man of God, he allowed me to use the same pulpit for the Lord to use the gift of me over 10 years ago. And I have been wondering why I wasn't here anymore. I have been pondering that in my mind. And then the Holy Spirit reminded me, Paul, because the Lord, he didn't even give me an opportunity to say goodbye. He just sent me on my next assignment. And what he sent me was, was the Jerusalem Church of God in Christ. Get a revelation here. The disciples had to carry Jerusalem so that they'll be filled with power. So that when folk begin to talk about you, because you see we're in the process stage, right? Sanctification. We're being processed. But in, when you're in that process of being processed, you need power to be able to stand for God. So I tarried in Jerusalem for two and a half years. <laughs> and while I was there, you know, God began to allow me to do some of the things I did at Asia. But prophetically, he always had witnesses in the house. Stand up, Rishan. The church that he sent me to, 
He actually gave me the address to the church. That's why I knew I was in the right place. What happened was, he had given me the address and I was going up and down looking for the church and I could never see it. It's like the enemy had a blinders over my eyes where I couldn't even see it. But then one day this woman of God, and she can tell you, my, my God's son, that's how he became my God's son, because relationships are important. He became my God's son because God would have me, even while I was at the Baptist church, at Asia Baptist, he would have me call her up and say, the enemy is trying to steal God's glory. Talking about Tyree. They had given Tyree up a dead long time ago when he first came into the world. But Tyree is still here. Why? Because he's glorifying God. You say, well, he's in a wheelchair. Guess what? Yes, glorifying God. And this woman got to testify to you. You see, because you know that a true prophet is there when the things that they say come to pass. Not just, you know, in the church, but even in the community <coughs> for which I live, it was perfect. I just told you earlier that everything in our lives have a purpose. Now we thought that. My husband and I, as I told you, he's a visionary, so I asked him when we were living on Bundy, I said, where do, uh, we, you know, we kind of had outgrown the space we were living in. And I said, where do you want to live? So we would ride around the city looking for different areas where we wanted to live. And so while we were there, the man that I told me we ended up at East Coast. I had gone to the place and I told him, I said, yeah, I think I found a place. And so when he came to see it, he said, yeah, babe, this is the place. Now when we saw the place, it didn't look like much. It was all messed up. You know how the homes look after Katrina. And so we thought in our mind that, okay, this is the place that we'll go to get away from the rest of the world and just go there and have peace and solace 